Hi everybody, this is Eugene O'Loughlin from Lecture in Computing at the National College of Ireland and welcome to my series of short how-to videos. In this video, we're going to learn how to perform a one-way ANOVA test and we're going to learn how to do it by hand. So first, let's examine the data that we're going to use in the example here. I have three groups of data and these are the results of stress tests based uh, made on four, sorry, three different groups of workers. A uh, shift that works from 4 p.m. to midnight, from midnight to 8 a.m. and the third group is from 8 a.m. to 4 p.m. And we've measured their stress levels and recorded the scores here. So we've got three groups and an appropriate test to use to see if there's a difference between these three groups is uh, an ANOVA test. The method I'm going to use here is based on the following formulas. We need to calculate our F statistic, and our F statistic is made up of, that's our test statistic, We meet, it's made up of the mean sum of squares between the groups, so we've got three groups in our example here, divided by the mean sum of squares within the groups. So in an ANOVA, of course, we have to take into account the variance between and within the groups. The formula for calculating the MSSW is up here at the top, and this is, uh, tells us that we need to add up so it's the sum of all the small values, g, all the values within the groups, to for each number of groups, that's uh, capital G, we need to um, uh, calculate the um, each value minus the mean of each group and square that. We then divide by n minus k, n is the total number of variables, and k is the total number of groups. The mean sum of squares between is again the sum for all values, uh, so these are the individual values g, for the number of, for all groups, capital G. We're going to multiply the number in each group by the mean of each group, x bar, small g, minus the mean, or the overall grand mean, uh, x bar, capital G, squared. And we're going to divide that by k minus 1. So first off, we, there are some descriptive statistics that we need to determine before we can start using plugging values into these formulae. So what I've done is I have first of all laid out my data as follows. I've got my formulas just handwritten in over here on the right hand side and here are my three columns of data that we have just seen. And I need to calculate the number in each group, so num NG is the number in each group and N capital G is the overall number. So when I count up all these values here I see I get 10, here I've got 13 and for the third group I've also got 13 values. So N1 is going to be 10, N2 is 13 and N3 is also 13. N capital G is the number overall, the number of variables in all the groups combined, so that's going to be 10 plus 13 plus 13, which is 36. And the mean, uh, for now we need to calculate the mean, X bar, for each of the groups. It's a small g, so that's going to be, for the first group, all of these values added together and divided by 10. And when I do that, I get a result of 7.4. When I calculate the average of the second group, add up all 13 values and divide by 13, I get a result of 5.15. And when I do the same for the third group, add them all up, divide by 13, I get a mean of that group of 3.23. Uh, so uh, x bar 1 is 7.4, x bar 2 is 5.15, and x bar 3 is 3.23. Three. I also need to calculate the grand mean, so that's our capital designated by capital G. And so, so what we need to do then is take all 36 values here, add them all together, and divide by 36. And when we do that, we get a result of 5.08. If our sample sizes are the same, and, and they're not in my example here, we could simply take the mean of the mean. So we could add those three values together and divide by 3 to get the mean of means. But that is does not work if you've got different sample sizes. The final variable here is k, which is the number of groups. I've got three groups, so I'm going to write down 3 in here. So this is typically what you would do uh, when you're conducting an ANOVA test, so to set out your data like this. So let's start with our null hypothesis. So our h0 is that the mu of our first group, I'm going to call it group 1, is equal to the mu, the, pop the mean of the second group, which is equal to the mean of the third group. So my null hypothesis is, is that there's no difference between the populations in my example here. And my alternate hypothesis, h1, is that mu1 is not equal to mu2 is not equal to mu3. So in other words, my null is, is that the, um, they're all the same, and my alternate hypothesis is that there's at least two of my groups have different levels of stress. I'm also going to work here with an, an alpha value of 0 0.05. So we'll be coming back to that a little bit later on. 
So now, the first thing I need to, the next thing I need to do is is to work out my formula. So based on these values over here on the mid left hand side, I can plug a lot of these values into my formula that I need over here on the right side. But one of the things you can see I need is I need to determine x minus x bar squared for each value in each of the groups. So let's go ahead and, and go about doing that. I've got three columns set up here, so I'm going to have x bar 1 minus x1 minus x bar 1 squared. So that's going to be the first group of 10 values here. x2 minus x bar 2 squared. And that's going to be the calculations for the second group. And the third group will be designated x3 minus x bar 3 squared. So now I need to populate all these values here. So to calculate x1 minus x bar 1 squared for the first value of 7 here, I'm going to, so that's going to be 7 minus the mean, which is 7.4, and we square the result. So let's go ahead and do that. So we've got 7 minus 7.4, that's equal to minus 0 0.4, and we square that, and we get a result of 0 0.16. I can see in my data that my second value is also 7, so I'm just going to plug in 0 0.16 again, and move on to the third value. So I'm calculating x1 minus x bar 1 squared here. So 6 is the next value, so 6 minus the mean, 7.4, is equal to minus 1.4, we square that value, and the next one is 1.96, and so on. And we do that until we get down to the last value here for the tenth value in, in this column. We now move over to the next column. We're going to do the same thing for the um, midnight to 8 a.m. group. So that's our group 2. So our first calculation here is 5 minus the mean of 5.15, and we square that value. So 5 minus 5.15 equals 0 0.15 minus, and we square that, and we get 0 0.02 rounded. My next value is 6 minus the mean, so 6 minus 5.15 equals 0.85 squared is 0.72 rounded, 0 0.72. And of course we keep doing that, until in this case going down right down to the end, all 13 values, to work out x2 minus x bar for each of these values here. And just to confirm, we do the same in the third value here. So this is x3 minus x bar 3. So our first x3 is 1. It's going to be minus 3.23 squared. So let's do that. 1 minus 3.23 is equal to minus 2.23. We square that. Whoops, I need to do that again. Uh, 1 minus 3.23 is equal to minus 2.23 squared. It gives me 4.97 rounded. And I keep doing that then for each of the values here in co in this in this column. So earlier I have uh, fi actually filled out all those values and um, here they are in my sheet. So I've got all of the x minus x bar squared for all my first group, second group and third group and now I need to sum them all up. So the sum just by adding up all of those values there that's equal to you get 10.4. Add up all the second ones here this is sum is equal to 13.69 and simple addition of all these thir third group here is that our sum is going to be equal to 32.31. So these are our individual group sums of squares so when, when I add these two three groups together so I will get my sum of squares and I'm working on the within formula my sum of squares within is equal to the three of these figures added so let's go ahead and do that. So 10.4 plus 13.69 plus 32.31 is equal to 56.4. So that is effectively, that is the top part of our formula over here. So we've now worked out the sum of all of the individual values for all of the groups, um, x minus x bar squared for each one, adding them all together, and now we need to divide by n minus k. So n minus k, okay, that's equal to n, which is 36, the grand n minus k, which is 3, so 36 minus 3 will give us 33. So our mean sum of squares then, mean sum of squares within, is equal to 56.4 56 .50, divided by 33, which is equal to, let's do that, 56.4 on my calculator, divided by 33 is equal to 1.71 rounded. So my mean sum of squares, w within, is 1.71. I have now calculated uh, the denominator in my f formula over here. Now we need to go over and calculate the mean sum of squares between.
And we can see in our formula here that we need to, for each of the groups, so we've got three groups, so we're going to take the mean of each group and subtract the grand mean, square it, and multiply it by the number of each group. We're going to do that for all groups. Then divide by k minus, minus 1. So to work out our formulas here for this, so n1 for the first group, this is equal to um, x bar 1 minus x bar grand g squared. And we're going to get a value for that. Our second group is going to be n2 times x bar 2 minus the grand mean again, squared. And the final group, we have three groups here, x bar 3 minus x bar grand squared is equal to, and if I had four or five groups I would keep doing this. So now the, every, all the values I need for these individual uh, calculations here are taken from my table that I created earlier on. So let's fill these out. n1 is 10, n2 is 13, and n3 is also 13. So that's the first part of each formula, n1, n2, n3. Um, x bar 1 is 7.40, x bar 2 is 5.15, and x bar 3 is 3.23 minus the grand mean, which is 5.08 in each case, so 5.08, 5.08, 5.08, and we square that. So let's work out what each one of these is. So I'm going to do the middle bit first, square, and then multiply by n. So 7.4 minus 5.08 is equal to 2.32. We square that, and then multiply by 10 that's equal to 53.82. The next one is 5.15 minus 5.08 squared, then multiply by 13, minus 5.08 is equal, we square that, and multiply by 13 is 0 0.06. And the last one, 3.23 minus 5.08, 3.23, minus 5.08 equals minus 1.85. We square that and multiply by 13. And that gives us 44.49. So now we need to sum all of these together. So the sum of these three here is equal to, just let's add all of those up. So 53.82 plus 0 0.06 plus 44.49. That gives us a total, a sum of all of these values here, of 98.37. So what I have done in my formula here is that I have worked out the top the top line for the mean sum of squares between um, all of the values, add them all up for each group, the mean of each group minus the grand mean squared. So that's the total here uh, of 98.37. So now I need, so my mean sum of squares then, my formula is I take that value and divide by k minus 1. Now k is 3, so we need to divide that uh, 98.37 divided by k minus 1, which is 3 minus 1, which is 2. And that equals 2, so 98.37 divided by 2 is equal to 49.19 rounded. So 49.19 rounded represents my mean sum of squares between. So I have my mean sum of squares within up here. I have my mean sum of squares between down here, and my f statistic then is my mean sum of squares between divided by my mean sum of squares within. So that's going to be uh, 1.71, which I've got from here, divided by 49.19. Sorry, it's the other way around, isn't it? Yep. 40, mean sum of squares between is equal to 49.19 divided by 1.71. So let's see what that is. So, so 49.19 divided by 1.71 is equal to 28.77 rounded. 28.77 rounded. So that's my F statistic. So that's um, calculations uh, done for now. Um, I have a couple of small ones left to do. My F statistic is 28.27. I now need to look up some tables to determine uh, if this is uh, a significant, represents a significant difference between the three groups or not. To do this, uh, I need to check uh, my F distribution. Uh, the F distribution I'm looking at is uh, the one for uh, alpha value of equal to 0 0.05. And so I need to know what column and what row to choose here. So I'm going to go back now to my um, formula over here. My degrees of freedom between is equal to k minus 1, so that's 3 minus 1. So my degrees of freedom 
um, between is equal to 3 minus 1, which is equal to 2. And my degrees of freedom within is equal to n, which is 36 minus k, which is 3, so 36 minus 3, which is equal to 33. So the, the degrees of freedom between represents the column, so that's going to be a value of 2, so I'm going to go down this column here, a value of 2, and with my ruler here I'm going to mark out uh, the line nearest to 30, so in my version of the tables I don't have a figure for 33, uh, so I'm going to go to the nearest figure which is 30, and that gives me a critical value, my F critical value of 3.32. So my F critical is equal to 3.32. I can see from my F value up here and my critical value here that my F my F stat, my F statistic is greater than my F crit crit my critical statistic. Therefore, I have enough evidence to reject the null hypothesis. So jump coming back over here to the left hand side to my null hypothesis. Um, my f stat is greater than the f crit, therefore I reject. So to I draw my uh, f distribution here, it's going to be something like this, with the tail over here down at the end. My critical value equals to 3.32, and my uh, f stat greatly exceeds that. My f stat greatly exceeds that, that's equal to 28.77. So therefore, at alpha equal to 0 0.05, we reject, because our data, our f stat falls well into the rejection region here. So that's how you conduct a one-way ANOVA, um, using uh, three groups in this case here, by hand. I hope you found this video useful. Thank you for your attention.